Patrons of wacky Japanese fighter games worship the Guilty Gear name above all others. And whilst this latest incarnation of old school gaming pales in comparison to the slick 3D wonders of Tekken 4 and Soul Calibur 2, Guilty Gear stalwarts will undoubtedly fall for its 2D charms, regardless of our worldly expert opinions. It's not that we don't like it, it's just that we've been down the 2D beat-em-up road countless times before, and this particular genre is starting to look very tired. And let's be honest, Guilty Gear X2 just isn't the kind of game to generate mass market appeal, with the average PS2 owner having moved on from this gaming format ages ago. But for those anime crazed loons among you, it's all a question of gameplay, and quite rightly so. Where other games rely on a subtle balance between hand-to-hand -hand combat and hefty combos, Guilty Gear's deep combat system is based purely around chainable moves and explosive combinations. Guilty Gear is renowned for its adoption of Capcom's chain combo system, and the invention of the Roman Cancel is probably the best thing in 2D fighting games since the Super Meter was first introduced. And while there are a few essential tweaks to tone down the endless combo play and revise certain control functions, the gameplay soon becomes lost in the incomprehensible world of counters, super moves and mind-boggling maneuvers, just as before. Understanding each character's moves is obviously the key to success then, which is why Guilty Gear veterans can smash the game to pieces by juggling their opponents and throwing in some really nice-looking fireballs and dragon punches to finish things off. Yes, you get four new characters and the graphics look, well, half-decent, but consider this. Do you really want to spend all that time mastering a great, slightly flawed fighter like this when Soul Calibur 2 is just around the corner and looks infinitely superior? You thought not.